Hey guys, welcome. Welcome to Interstage Window, um, my show that we do on Saturdays. That's a conversation between myself and uh, my almost always my co-host, Landon. Say hi, Landon. Hey, all right, guys. I see some of you guys are already here. Hey, Jane. Hey, Bree. Hey, Erica. Hey, anybody else that has not spoken in the chat yet? I hope you guys are doing good today on Saturday. Um, we've got a, a chill, uh, oh, hey, Naomi, <laughs> Naomi's here too. All right. We've got, um, <laughs> that's right. All of our favorite people. Uh, we've got a, we've got a pretty, um, chill show for you guys planned today. Landon, what is it that we're going to be talking about? Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, you are not coming through. Hang on, I'm having an audio problem. It's not Discord, it's the stream. It's the stream, hang on. Let me see if I can fix it. Oh my gosh, you're continuing the gift sub. Thank you so much. So sorry, I'm so sorry guys. I know y'all cannot hear Landon. She is talking, but you can't hear her. We're gonna have to stop the stream. Uh, don't leave the chat, please. We are not actually ending. I just have to fix this and it's not fixing lives. So I think I need to turn off. We will be right back. Anyways, as I was saying, say hi, Landon. <laughs> hi, Landon, now you can hear me. <laughs> there we go, now I can see you coming through. All right, so, um, so what is it that we're going to be talking about today, Landon? Apparently we're gonna be talking about really spicy uh, writing tips since Twitch decided to not want me to be available for you guys to listen to these wonderful hot tips that we have for you. <laughs> They're spicier than we thought, apparently. They're spicier apparently, than we thought. We didn't know. <laughs> like, we can't make them any better writers. This is the best. This will be bad. We got to keep them. We got to keep their confidence low and their skill <laughs> un unrelinquished. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about just some very general writing tips, right? So it's going to be uh, tips that we have found useful. Also, we're going to go into like bad advice that we have seen um, people given yeah. as writing tips, all kinds of fun stuff like that. So if you guys are looking for general writing tips today, today is the episode for it. Yeah. And we are expert writers. <laughs> <laughs> Not expert streamers, apparently, since I set it up all wrong. I don't even know what was wrong, y'all, but it's something with my, uh, my wireless headset. So I just had to switch it over to the wired one and then we're good. Oh, thank you for the lurk, Lars. So happy to see you here today. All right. So writing tips today. Um, but do we want to get started with favorite things? Oh, yeah, that thing. Favorite things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as we've learned, I have three things that are favorite things. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's either a candle, something, or coffee. Uh, and right now I have two coffees. So really, that's the highlight of the week. We, my week two coffees my right now oh two my gosh i can't believe you have two coffees landon <laughs> yeah two venti different kinds of coffees <laughs> from starbucks <laughs> oh my god that sounds like heavenly it's i, I want to get starbucks after this maybe <laughs> yeah no it's me i am the reason why starbucks is still in business i feel like that this semester is even more true than usual. Uh, that feels like me yeah. during the last semester of um, of my college. There was a Starbucks like on our campus, like literally on the campus. So, um, you know, of course I was there all the time. <laughs> I mean, if we, what would we be if not a cliche, if we <laughs> didn't go to Starbucks as writers? Like, I feel like coffee shops are the mecca of writers <laughs> it's so part of it yeah and i don't know how um the one near you is but since the one i would go to at that time was like right on the college campus it was always packed so like they had tables hypothetically but not really there was always like a line all around everywhere stretching out the building so you could never get to the tables and actually hang out at the starbucks you just got your starbucks and left <laughs> i have um i'm very picky about my bucks i have two starbucks that i frequent simply because there's two around me one um is the better one which is on my way to school and it's over by my old place where i used to live and they know me there so it's Ooh. great um <laughs> that also tells you how often i go um <laughs> but the the one that currently i go to is closer to my apartment um 
but it's not the better one. So I was definitely in line this morning for like 30 minutes trying oh, to get gosh. my Starbucks. Yeah, so, definitely flashbacks to uh, to my Starbucks experience when I was in college for sure with that story. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I was like, if I'm late for stream, it's because I had Starbucks, so it's worth it. <laughs> hey, apparently they wanted us to be late today, so. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I was just about to tell Jane because Jane was uh, – talking in the in the general chat she's like do i have time to get my fancy coffee and when and when the stream went down i was like jane i think you have time (laughs) (laughs) for sure the the universe really wanted us to get that fancy coffee today for for sure i think uh you karen you should get fancy coffee this afternoon i guess i should but um (laughs) no my my real favorite thing i think is also uh today is march 20th Mm -hmm. which is a very important day Um, It's the day in which seasonal depression decides to go take a vacation for a little while and allow regular depression to take its place. Oh, yay. uh, Happy spring, everybody. We like the mild flavor depression instead of the spicy winter depression. So that's nice. Yeah, (laughs) It's a nice, it's a new little flavor. It just mixes it up. So uh, happy spring, everybody. That's what I got to say to you today. Happy spring, happy spring. I love it. Karen, what's your favorite thing of the week? All right. So um, welcome, Katie, first. And some of you guys already found what I want to talk about for my favorite thing. So we are getting to the point in... My favorite thing is video games, by the way, um, just to give it a, a name. But uh, but we are getting to the point where we will be done with... Um, oh, thank you for the follow, old flowers. So happy to have you here. Um, I saw you lurking before previously. I think you ended up in the in Erica's raid, but um, but uh, happy to have you actually here and following. So uh, so some of you guys already found this, but we're gonna be getting close in over the next I don't know month month and a half to the end of Via Pinata. I'll have gotten all the awards and everything. So we need a new game to play during interstage window. Um, we're also going to be making some fun formatting changes to the show, so I don't know if every single episode we're going to be playing a game, but there's still definitely going to be episodes where it's like just me and Landon having a conversation and me playing a game in the background, right? So Mm -hmm. what that means is I'm going to need a new game sometime in the next month or two. So there is now a 30-day challenge, and use this to vote. So at the end of the 30 days, whichever one has the most points or whichever one reaches the max points the quickest is the next game that we will play. So here's how it's going to work. The, um, if you guys love the show how it is, you don't want anything to change, you want the exact same vibes that we've got going on now, what you should do is vote for um, Stardew Valley. It's another farming game very similar to Viva Pinata as far as like chill and beautiful and vibin' and all that stuff. If you would like me to be playing the same game for a long time potentially, then what you should vote for is The Sims 2 Legacy Challenge. If I'm doing that game, I've never actually completed a Legacy Challenge, but I know how to do one, so we're going to do kind of a modified Legacy Challenge if you guys choose that. And um, and that will take forever for me to complete. I know this because I've tried before and I've never finished one. If it's on stream, I'm thinking maybe I'll finish it. Um, if you want, though, Interstage Window to, you know, be a little bit different, you could also vote for the Chaos game, which is for me to do a Pokemon Nuzlocke challenge while we're doing Interstage Window. So whichever one you're feeling, whichever vibe you're feeling, put your points into that. Whichever of those reaches the max first or whatever has the most points at the end of the 30 days, that is the game that we will play next. So I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And um, in all of these games, like whatever doesn't get voted for, don't worry, we will eventually do it. Just probably not on Interstage Window. We'll probably do it, um, play some of it on a, on a artistic license or something like that. Listen, I just... I need you to make a sim with me. That's all I need. Um, honestly, I just need a sims character. <laughs> so maybe maybe if we do um, the legacy challenge, because you have to make a starting sim for the legacy challenge, yeah. maybe it'll be Landon. She'll be our, the founder of our of our legacy family. Oh, of all, maybe we'll of do all it that way. The babies, yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do like a, we'll do it afraid. matriarchy style um, with Landon yeah. as the founder. Please. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, y'all vote, 
use those points um, to tell me what it is that you would like to see for the next game on Interstage Window. Katie, you're it. my new favorite person. <laughs> I was about to type it in the chat, but I figured I would just say it out loud because I have that power. Um. <laughs> yeah, y'all can put in a max of 2k each stream. So that's how that works um, and how you can min-max or however y'all want to do it if you care a lot. I know that we have 30 days left of this, but I would just like to say that uh, Sims is almost halfway there. <laughs> of course it is. Well, I made them pretty low because I figured like, you know, there's three different choices and I really just want people to be voting. Like, I don't necessarily care about like the challenge aspect of it. I just thought it was like a really cute way to allow y'all to vote, you know? Oh, I appreciate it. I just, I, that, I'm just finding this amusing. Y'all clearly want Sims. Y'all clearly want Sims. That's what I've, that's what I've, that's what's happened. Oh, hey, Eric. Oh my gosh. Long time no see. Happy to have you back. Eric is back. <laughs> I think it's all of our people, but I'm so happy to see new people. Katie is here and I think Kiara is here mm -hmm. and, and Odd Flowers is here too. Yes. All right. Shall we dive in? Yes. Let's dive in. How do we want to get started? Um, all right. What is good writing? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like that is our first question of everything is what is so and so? Um, but I think that there is like, right, writing is subjective. What people consider good writing is subjective. And I think that, that is something that is going to be an overall lesson from the stream is that you might you might check all the boxes of being a good writer uh, for yourself or for somebody else, and you might not for another person. Mm -hmm. um, and you just have to live with that. You're yeah. not going to be everybody's cup of tea. No matter how popular an author is, they still got haters, right? Oh, yeah. And I think it's, and it's no different for, for us, um, you know, in our experience with writing. And, like, let's also be honest. Writing is an art like mm -hmm. it is art it is practice based it is something you develop over time you can be naturally skilled at it you might not be um but like art art is subjective <laughs> just like drawing or painting you might like a certain style versus i like a certain style like there you will never be great at every every aspect for every person of writing mm -hmm. um you can just only really look deep in yourself and realize that hey i like what i write mm -hmm. i like how i write and that's that these are i think that we're talking about tools and advice to get to that point to be confident in your own writing because really as soon as you start feeling confident in your own voice and your own writing that's when you're a good writer yeah because you know your tone you know your style you know your lane yeah um and you're not doubting yourself mm-hmm mm-hmm I think that is very, very true because how many times have we experienced, and I'm sure you've experienced it before, something is like so popular and everybody loves it and you read it, you read it and you're like, but why? <laughs> <laughs> why does everyone love this? I don't get it. It's not, it's not for me. I'm not the audience. You know, I've definitely had that experience. I'm sure you have too. Any, any One Direction fan fiction. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, not to hate on the One Direction real person fic people, but, um, oh, big, big hey, same. <laughs> some, people, some people have written, be I'm sure, beautiful fan fiction about Harry Styles and Louis. Louis? I don't know the other person. No, no, that's that. right. That's the main ship. You got it. All right. I know for a fact that I'm sure that there is beautifully written fan fiction about brushing hands and lingering stares. It is not for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's just automatically, I'm like, yeah, that's not good writing. <laughs> it might be amazing. It might be the next Picasso or or Mona Lisa in that in that fan fiction. But for me, I'm just like, no, thanks. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, I can definitely vibe with that. So uh, so I'll, I'll give like a, an example. I've probably said this before on stream because it's my go to example of this. Um, I don't like Tolkien. <laughs> I hate Tolkien. Okay. I think he's oh, awful. Sorry. I think he's awful. And I'm sorry. I know that people love him. And even in that case, I know why people love him because he's a master world builder and he, you know, and he's, he, he's a, he's a master at creating languages and certain things like that. But 
I find his prose so boring. I can't mm -hmm. stand it. I can't stand it. But that probably doesn't surprise anybody that, that knows me. Because if y'all know me, then you know if you write me something that's like three paragraphs that could have been one, I'm annoyed. So, <laughs> and that's <laughs> Tolkien. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how, how like, good or loved you are you're still going to have haters and it really doesn't matter how many haters you have there is still potentially an audience out there for your for your writing you know so long as you keep working at it i think that's really like the main points that we're trying to make in this little beginning part right yeah and like it's even happening here in the chat old flowers and jane are talking about how much they love tolkien which is like fair and valid but for us like like you said for me i'm like i don't need to know how slowly the cheer dropped down her cheek in as many words as possible yeah i, I don't need to know it <laughs> yeah i don't care sometimes there's just too much in his in particular there's just too much description of like the yeah. setting in the world and i'm like i don't need you to tell me i can imagine like what mountains look my, like you know what i mean <laughs> my ADD brain my adhd brain which i've not been diagnosed for but i feel like with reading i sometimes have it that I'm just like, I can't focus on this. I'm thinking about other things like math now, and I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't know how we got to math from Tolkien, but I'm thinking it because you let me wander too much. <laughs> no, but that's pretty much what it is. I think I'm just too busy. I'm just too busy for that kind of stuff, and I don't think I have, I don't think I have patience. Um, and, and that's really what it boils down to. <laughs> and this, and we're talking about in like, we're talking about in literature. We're not necessarily talking in RP during this. Mm -hmm. this particular discussion right now in general we will get to that but um but that's also why there's genre mm -hmm. and why there's different genre because like we're talking also at this point fantasy versus new adult or popular fiction and there are different categories that have and service different styles of writing and what is considered good writing within each of those different genres yep um it's very much like music in that way too is that you can't some people really love country music some people really love rap music mm -hmm. it's, there's no saying which one is better and how can you apply what is good to both of those things when they're looking for very different things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the standard and, is different so, yeah exactly so we we are we are aware of that when it comes to our advice for writing is yeah. that there are different levels and different wants and different things that are important to different writers yeah and i think if we if we can mention role play for just a second here yeah um what's important in in role play often isn't how good you are at your prose and i think that some role players get super focused on that as far as like i'm not getting partners my writing must be bad or partners keep ghosting me my writing must be bad and that's not necessarily true. So my hope is that with this episode today and what you guys are taking away is how to improve your writing. Not necessarily like if you're struggling to find and keep partners, this episode is not going to help you. Like that's just the end, the end of it. If you're not though, if you're, if you're not having trouble finding and keeping partners and you're more just trying to improve in general, this episode is for you. Like that's who we're really talking to today, not people who are struggling with role play, people who are doing just fine and are looking to improve for like their own purposes. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm looking through our, our titles. Your role playing experiences is not about writing. We're 34 episodes in, into this podcast, into the stream. And we have talked about writing like genuine parts and writing once when our symbolism um yep. and our symbolism and maybe endings you could kind of count as a writing part mm -hmm. um so twice in 34 episodes yeah. 35 episodes now including this one it is it'll have been three times yeah and that's it <laughs> uh, <laughs> but role playing is about writing but it's really not about writing which means that you keeping partners is not about writing mm -hmm. it's about all the other things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly that's what's really important that is so I, that yeah. the, the writing is like the writing is like the icing when it comes to like what skills are important for role play like it's nice you wouldn't want to eat a cupcake without icing but 
it cupcake without icing is still pretty good you know it's a muffin people yeah. love fucking muffins yeah people do <laughs> people still some eat people, muffins some people prefer muffin muffins to um anything to to uh what's my call it so cupcakes, cupcakes. yeah people are crazy in my opinion but some people do mm-hmm <laughs> mm -hmm. so all right, hold on. Sims is people. Things are gaining on Sims. So I, I see that. I see that. Hey, Lunar. It's because <laughs> Lunar. It's because you mi you missed favorite things where I was explaining what those were for. Somebody in the chat like explained to Lunar how those are working. Um, because I see you just voted for all of them, which is fine. Like, go for it. Oh, um, no, Lunar. Just go. she did all the top ones. Yeah, that's okay though. That's okay. Ones. It means that she's excited about all possibilities. Oh, I'm here <laughs> for it. But I was more gonna just hope that she would throw her her votes towards. Sims. Well, I'm, too I'm late. To manipulate the situation, Karen. Too late. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> F yeah, yeah, muffins. That's right, Naomi. <laughs> yeah, people, people love muffins more than cupcakes. So, Sometimes like, that's part of it too. Mm -hmm. Um, and I genuinely do think that being a good writer, just like being good at anything, comes with confidence in it. Yeah, it comes with believing in your ability, seeing your worth, and willing to find people who are on that same level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if you constantly feel like you're the worst writer of your RP group or of your friend group or anything like that, you won't be producing good things. Yeah, in my likely. opinion, because you won't think it's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. um, and imposter syndrome is real like I mean I struggle oh, with that too I'm sure a lot of people do um, I, I have to apply to an MFA program to try to, to try to convince myself I'm a good writer so I understand <laughs> I understand imposter syndrome a hundred percent yeah yeah but um but still like I, I think still and and I think and this is also just me personally and what I value in a role play partner so, you know, there are definitely role players out there that aren't going to be interested in role playing with you if your prose is not good. But me personally, like, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. I've role played with plenty of people that had crappy prose, but they had other things. Like, they were good at that idea generation and plotting. Or, like, um, I, I liked them as a person out of character. Or I thought that they had cool character ideas that I was interested in interacting with them, you know? So like there to me, like those are far more important things, but like, I don't want anyone to get the impression that like everyone feels this way, even though I do think in general writing is not that important. You're definitely going to come across role players that for them, writing is the end all be all. And if your prose is bad, they're not going to give you the time of day, but that just means that that's not the partner for you at that moment you know, and you can work on improving it so that you can attract those types of people in the future if you want to. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, and like for me personally too, I, I've never really, uh, I've never really come across a person and been like, that person's a bad writer. Right? Like I, I have certainly met people where I'm like, their writing can improve. Yep. Um, there are certain aspects of their writing that could improve. Um, their writing style is not for me, but I've never really met someone and been like, oh, that person is bad at writing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's like this idea of being bad in writing comes from like what we're taught in school. Yeah. I think that's where it starts um, for a lot of people, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, okay. So writing and reading are not natural abilities that the human brain can do. You gotta learn um, it. It is something that is taught. Speaking and communicating is natural. So learning languages is natural. Even doing some levels of ar arithmetic is like, sorry, I'm putting on my teacher brain, <laughs> but <laughs> is is natural. But like the actual art of reading and writing is something that it comes with really hard skill and a lot of practice and your entirety of your elementary school learning is dedicated to the craft of learning how to do this. Yep. People don't um, come out the womb literate, basically. Yeah, no, you don't. And and there is a huge reason why here in America it's I think thirty percent, maybe a little less, maybe it was twenty twenty percent of adults are considered below the illiterate line. Yeah. Um, and that's because A, where our level of literacy is, 
and B, because it's also a practiced thing that if you don't continue to do it, you'll lose the ability to do it. Mm -hmm. So for people who haven't picked up a book in years, it's really hard for them to read. Yep. Because they don't have that skill that they've been practicing if you are a consistent reader. Yep. Yep. So they um, have to relearn it, even if they could read just yep. fine when they were in school. If they, they never do it as an adult, then it's going to be a struggle. Yeah, exactly. But when you put standards on and expectations on this thing that is not a natural ability for the human brain to comprehend, it starts really getting into your skin and into your psyche that you're bad at it. Mm -hmm. That if you had a teacher who didn't particularly like your writing or hyper-focused on spelling or hyper-focused on where fucking commas go, mm -hmm. you're going to like ingest that information and it's going to it's going to haunt you forever. Yeah. Um when in reality that's not something that actually matters. <laughs> <laughs> not and it doesn't matter in that way. Like I think I think that um you know because a lot of us are learning to write through the school system, what ends up happening is we get advice from teachers and and I think most teachers are trying to help. Like I don't think they're trying to be malicious, but we get ranked <laughs> from we get ranked from grades, we get feedback from teachers who we feel like are these points of authority and we internalize it in this very harsh way that makes it so that we start to think like oh because my skill at this needs improvement or this particular teacher doesn't like my writing that i must be a bad writer and that is some kind of like inherent trait inside of me and that's just not true writing is a practiced skill which means that no matter what level you're at or no matter what a particular teacher's opinion is of your writing, it's not like, it's not static. Like it can change. You can totally improve just with practice and time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have a story about a teacher commenting on writing. Yes. And, yes. So I want to hear it. that story. Tell us. Um, so I was, I have wanted to be a writer since third grade. <laughs> like I wrote a story Forever. About, yeah, about coming, uh, coming over on the Mayflower and <laughs> like, and I wrote this story and I swear to God, my third grade teacher was like, oh my God, you're an amazing writer. And since then, cause I was, you know, an oldest child who lived off the of validation and praise of others ever that since then I was like, I want to be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> um so I I had been doing it for years and years and years I had been writing poetry I had been writing fan fiction I had been writing all of these things um and I was really good at it I won competitions I was published I was a senior in high school in my last semester of high school and I was not in a good place but I had writing um and my writing teacher had us like write this poem and stuff like that and i literally oh it was an amazing moment i literally like shared the poem out loud i was the only person who did it uh and the class was silent afterwards like gobsmacked silent <laughs> and wow. it was awesome and wonderful and so i knew i could write and i knew i had proven myself not only to my classmates but to my teacher um and uh after spring break came around we were doing this really big project, this big writing project. And because I was depressed and because I had a lot of issues going on at home, I wasn't doing homework. I had never done homework in my entire high school career. You can listen to my whole story of that back in our like education episode. Yep. Um, but I, I had a conference with this teacher and this teacher literally sat me down in front of her and said to my face that I was a shitty writer. Uh, those words exactly. Um, you're a shitty writer. And I'm like, that was something that really affected me to the point that I was like, how am I a shitty writer? Like I've, I've had all this proof that I'm a good writer and my teacher, the person that like I'm supposed to trust with my academics and my writing with is literally calling me out and saying that I'm shitty at it. So I stopped writing. Um, and it's been like this thing that I've had carry with me because she's an authority figure. And she's the teacher, so she, of course, knows how to write. And she knows and should have the authority on these things. And I still carry that, um, which fucking sucks. Because it's like, first of all, it was senior year in high school. And also, I had all this other proof that I wasn't a shitty writer. But I still carry that. And it took a little while to realize that I think what she meant is because I don't follow, like, 
like deadlines. <laughs> that <I'll never> <laughs> um, but she didn't know how to like, tell you that in a way that you could understand in that moment. So yeah, what she, ended up coming out was like, you suck and I don't like your writing. Yeah, absolutely. And she, and also like sitting there and, and, and doing it in the worst way, but trying to be real and cool. And I mean, she had a lot of things not going for her as a teacher that I can critique now, but sitting there and, and not really using the power that our teachers have. And when they forget that uh, and do things like that, it really does affect us. And I'm sure that every single person can pick out a point in their time, whether it be high school, third grade, fifth grade, where they have had a teacher who has made them doubt their ability to do something. Mm -hmm. And they probably carried that for a lot longer than they're willing to admit. Mm -hmm. Um, I run off of spite, so my first book will be <laughs> dedicated to her. Um, <laughs> just be like, who's the shitty writer now, Mrs. I don't even remember her name, but I'll look it up in order to get that dedication out there. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. You don't even remember her name, but you absolutely remember how she made you feel. Like that says something true. about what teachers, <laughs> what what happens when we teachers have these conversations with their students. Yeah, no, and it's it was it was fucking ridiculous but it's that thing that you hold on to and in order to like be a good writer I had to shake that off I had to sit there and go her opinion doesn't matter just like as hard as it is but if you get a hate comment or negative comment on something you have to ignore it you have to learn how to sit there and be like I know I am better than this and I have belief in myself yeah because writing is such a internal thing you're creating something from inside out mm -hmm. you have to be able to have that ability to sit there and, and withstand whatever anyone else says about you starting with our teachers yeah yeah but i think i think we also have to keep in mind that like our human brains to try to protect us you know back from when we were you know living in the savannah running away from lions um we we want to more highly prioritize negative dangerous things than we do positive things so it's easy to carry around a comment despite winning a bunch of writing awards right it's easy to carry that that particular comment from that particular teacher's opinion because your brain is going to more heavily weight those situations and and i just and i know from like stuff that we have heard in the cafe of people that have struggled there um, of questions that we've gotten from people inside of our of, of our role plays, things of that nature that almost everyone has a story like that, where somebody oh, yeah. told them at some point in time they sucked. And I think a lot of times it is teachers. Every once in a while, it's fellow role players that we see. But we carry this around, this like one person who had an awful opinion about our writing and we try to like equate that to our writing as a whole and that's not right or healthy because there is an audience out there for you there is mm -hmm. no matter what you think about your, the level of your writing and no matter what you think about the quality of your writing there's an audience out there for you so long as you keep practicing and producing and putting it out there Yep. And as long as you know your worth, mm -hmm. um, like Karen said earlier, and I will, I will echo now, imposter syndrome is real. Um, our brains are also not meant to handle as much positive reinforcement as, impo as like being successful in something that we care deeply about gives because it is so hyper-focused on that negative. So that is real. Um, not feeling good enough is real. It's something that is, is promoted almost in our culture in a way yeah yeah oh, i mean I, um, I just experienced it yesterday um we had some stuff come up in in my life um if y'all are curious about that you can watch uh artistic license vod from last night and the one from the week before to get the full story but just had some craziness and so i couldn't stream on the normal thursday nights i had to stream on friday and i was like I changed my time. No one's going to be there. Like I had convinced myself of that when I go live, I'm like, I'm just going to have to talk to zero people and that's fine. It's whatever. It'll be like when I first started streaming, but then like everyone showed up <laughs> just like they would have, if it was Thursday night. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> it was crazy. I, I don't know why I thought that, but I did. Yeah. 
Um, and it's because our brains are, we're not meant to think that way. Yeah. Um, we're not trained. Our brains are not wired to think that way, but we're also not trained how to accept that way. Yeah. So the number one thing you can do is know your worth. Even if you don't believe it, even if you still have that doubt, know it, fake it, yep. sit there and go, I'm a good writer. If you have to look at yourself every day in the mirror or every time you post a reply or something and say, I'm a good writer you will eventually start to believe it. Mm -hmm. um, and that will improve your writing mm -hmm. because even if nothing else about your writing changes, how you view your writing will change. Yeah, and you'll feel that confidence. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um, so, um, but yeah, I think that that is like, as far as what is good writing and, and how we best can like, get that across i think those are the two big things that i wanted that we wanted to touch on yeah yeah um, so so once again 30 minutes in and we still haven't talked about like any skills or anything it's all internal stuff that's happening in your brain <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> it wouldn't be alert. in your stage window without that would it <laughs> but we do have some tips and tricks that we personally feel is more on the universal side mm -hmm. um but also recognizing that it is vastly our opinion and if you don't want to take anything from this Something you don't have to but if there are ways that you're like no i really don't want to work on myself that seems like a lot of things to do on a saturday afternoon <laughs> um give me tips and tricks <laughs> we we have some of that too mm -hmm. yep so, so if you're not um, if you're not ready for the for the internal work or you know that internal work is gonna is gonna take you a long time here's some stuff you can do right now <laughs> yeah yep so so what's what's the first one landon what's kind of our first of our tips my rule, and this is again my rule, but my saying is substance is king. Like it, we can talk about plot and everything or characters or whatever, but substance is king. So um, the quality of your writing will always outweigh the amount or quantity of your writing. Um, and sometimes we have to take into consideration that that's not always possible for us, that not every reply is going to be amazing works of art and so accepting the fact that sometimes fluff and short is also acceptable and also necessary um is is a good first step as far as that substance goes yep yep i've got a good example for this okay so someday i'm going to trick landon into reading the animorphs if you've read the animorphs you know the joy of this <laughs> series <laughs> <laughs> but the way that this this book series was set up is it was sold during um, scholastic book fairs back in the 90s, right? And what that meant is they released a book every single month. There was an overall story, right? But because they had to release a book every single month in these bite-sized chunks for kids to go buy at the book fair, sometimes they would have a story that really didn't have much to do with the whole rest of the plot. It was just a fun thing that the team of authors and ghostwriters thought would be cool, and then it never comes up again, okay? <laughs> and some of those books that have nothing to do with the overall plot are some of the best ones. So everything that you write doesn't have to be, like, the most beautiful, pristine thing, well-plotted, um, well-crafted, you know, fits so perfectly. It can totally just be like, I need to throw this out here because it's been a month and it's time to release another Animorphs book and we need to have something for the kids to buy because they want a new Animorphs book, right? And sometimes when you just let go and just let the writing happen, not always. Sometimes it's garbage. Sometimes it's Starfish Rachel, right? That's garbage for y'all that know Animorphs. But sometimes it's the Helmicrons, which is amazing. And if you don't remember those from Animorphs, look it up. They were the coolest freaking book and it has nothing to do with the whole rest of the series. <laughs> um, Goosebumps. Yeah, it, it used the same model as Goosebumps. And Goosebumps is the same way. Some Goosebumps stories are absolute garbage right? But sometimes you get these gems that are just so creepy and awesome. 
So it's okay to be like that. You can still be super popular. You can still be goosebumps pushing out garbage sometimes. <laughs> you could be. I and I I think that there's a piece of advice that you said in a video um that really helped because uh and you said it before videos, but um something is better than nothing. Yes. Uh, as far as writing goes and maintaining a relationship with your RP partner, because above all, that is what we're doing here. And that's what you need to be doing when you're RPing is maintaining a relationship. Mm -hmm. When you are maintaining a relationship, ghosting for three weeks until you have the ability to write something that is spectacular and amazing and something you're super proud of uh, is more harmful than posting something that might not be the best thing you've ever written, but will progress the story. Yep. Yep. I would rather get a mediocre reply once a week than have to wait a month for gold. Yeah. I would. Because to me, maintaining that relationship is far more important than writing the best reply ever. And it's, and sometimes the best replies ever, like, aren't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this is really good, but I had to wait three weeks to get it, and now I kind of don't care anymore. Like, like, that I sucks, but that happens. It's not long at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's overthought. Like, it's just, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of negatives that can come with that. Yeah. So doing something is better than doing nothing when it comes to writing. Yeah. Um, and that's why so many writing exercises are based Ooh. around just yeah. stream of conscious, right? Yeah. Don't delete anything. Don't re Ooh. read anything. Don't write anything. Like, just sit there and type whatever words Ooh. come to your mind. Um, because sometimes that's, that's what needs to get done. Yep. Um, yeah. And that, that's better than staring at a blank page. Yep. Yep. And so much, so much writing advice is that. So much writing advice is that. This, like, just get something on paper. Just yeah. get something on paper. Um, and that's why. It's because at the end of the day, that's better. And any if you're not role playing, right, and say you're writing like fanfic or you're writing a book or whatever, it's still the same. Like people and this happens in the cafe too, people ask questions and worry about like how do I start? What about this? What about that? And they're asking questions that are like, that is a second draft question. You just yeah. need to finish your first draft. Stop worrying about that. You know, and we've given that advice in the cafe. I've seen several people give that advice in the cafe numerous times. And that's why. It's because it's so much easier to answer all of those questions and figure all of that stuff out once you have something on the page. When you're staring at a blank page, yeah, you don't know exactly how the characters are going to interact. Yeah, you don't know exactly what plot beats should happen in the middle of the story. Like, yeah, you don't know because you haven't put anything down yet. But once you have a draft down, all of that stuff will be so much easier to figure out. Yeah. And again, back to that, like, waiting for a reply. I guarantee you that I will not remember whatever metaphor, simile, alliteration that you used in your reply to make it gold status i will not remember that what i will remember is waiting three weeks yeah exactly exactly because remember our unless brains you, prioritize the negativity unless you provided me a literal novel <laughs> I, I won't care yeah pretty much <laughs> Yeah, Eric, I hear um, what you're saying about what happened to you and Freya's boys, and I'm, and I'm so sorry that happened to you, but I think that's normal. I think that happens to a lot of people. And, and it's, so, it's so good that there's, that there's so many role plays out there because you, what, that's one thing that I think is wonderful about role play. You get infinite chances to try again and start over. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, after you have those type of experiences, I think the best thing you can do is just, like, hop right back on that horse and try again, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I think that that is um solid. Like again, it's this, it's the idea that yep, quality is better than the amount, but n something is better than nothing. Mhm. Mm something is better than nothing. Cuz it's it's about it's remembering about the way your partner made you feel. Yeah. And if they're making you feel like gosh, I have to wait forever, that's what you remember. And a very, I mean, this is a short jump and a hop skip away from that, but a kind of adjacent thing to that, too, is that there is a such thing as too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, because sometimes we also get wrapped up in that of, like, we want to make this really great reply 
and it's all really important and it's all really great and this actually comes up a lot of the time in character development uh, as a mod we get to see that um but yeah it's sometimes it's like okay we don't need to know every single second that is happening <laughs> and i don't need to have a play-by-play -play on how slowly the tear is falling from her face um especially if it lasts five paragraphs um <laughs> we were exaggerating slightly but that does happen where it's like I'm, actually i would be impressed if you could if you could write five i actually know because i know i know some people personally who yeah can. they probably we probably um, know some people who can yeah <laughs> i mean this in the most love no i won't call anyone out but in, in the loving ways like i i know some people who could be really good at it and do it for the meme of it that i'm like yeah if i challenge someone to do it I then they would do it <laughs> i yes <laughs> yep um, um yeah for sure yeah no and i think that this like idea of the that we that's the other thing too as far as substance goes is that editing is good just kind of like like that outfit saying that if you get your outfit together and you have some and you're an accessories person take away one accessory mm -hmm. um same thing goes for writing mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. it's more than one <laughs> take, <laughs> take, take away take away three paragraphs of uh tension building because you can't build tension in every especially in, in rp where it's back and forth where um dialogue is important if you look at regular novels there aren't three paragraphs between lines between dialogue lines yeah there's not um, that's not how novels work conversation needs to be quick sometimes um and that same thing it's something that i think we struggle and lose in rp especially people who like uh long form rp uh lose that because it's like i don't need three paragraphs of describing the same scenery yeah. <laughs> this isn't Tolkien <laughs> that's right Eric challenge for you you can do it <laughs> um but yeah I mean I I was caught in that trap for years for years oh, so where I, yeah. where I thought like more was better when I was a younger writer and and there was two things that caused it first thing is we'll go back to school <laughs> in school <laughs> When you write a paper or a, you have a creative writing assignment or whatever, you get told you have to write this amount, you know? You have like a word limit that you have to hit. You have um, so many pages that you're supposed to write, what have you. And um, so we can start to get convinced that like longer is better because let's say that you have a creative writing assignment, you write your story and you realize, oh shoot, it's not long enough, I have to somehow add more. And as a young writer, it's really hard to do that. Um, and so you can end up adding fluff. So that's one place where I think we get screwed up on length is more. And then what happens is like, we self-perpetuate that. So what I mean by that is that I have been in forum role plays where that self-perpetuation totally took over like there were word limits like that you had to hit in the role play so like they yeah. they duplicated that idea from school and transferred it into role play and i i think that still goes on somewhat today not as much since forum role plays aren't as popular most people are role playing on social media but if you still are involved in the forum role play scene you probably do still see this and it just perpetuates it. So I would join role plays like that because in my mind, those were like the good role plays, right? Like those were like the elite role plays or whatever. So I was like, I'm gonna get into that. So I would do that and I would just write and write and write. And I got used to writing that much until, I don't know, one day a switch flipped and I was like, this is garbage. I think it was probably like reading other people's replies to me and me being like, oh my God, this is such a slog. And I was starting to get older and impatient. <laughs> you know so i started to realize like maybe this is not good and um and i kind of i kind of switched over to like no well, you need to figure out how to edit yourself and write less but there was years where i was just adding and adding and adding and adding when it was completely unnecessary completely unnecessary because of school and then we would self-perpetuate exactly what school taught us that was wrong yeah, I definitely remember um, one of the first RPs that I was in was Forum, and there was a 500 word uh, limit. Yes! Or, like, word word requirement. 
And I remember at this point, the person that I was shipping with, who's a good friend of mine, and myself had to go to the mods and ask permission because this one scene that we had been planning out was supposed to be very quick fire back and forth, the dialogue of them talking over each other. And we didn't want to lose momentum. We wanted to be able to write it very quickly and also feel very quickly. Um, and with 500 words for every single half sentence, you can't really do that. Nope. <laughs> Um, so it was this whole, it was this whole thing of, of having to get that approval and then having to go through the process and then knowing like the mods were watching us and it just, it was like, God, 500 words is a lot of words. Yeah. <laughs> especially so, when it's yeah. just dialogue. Especially, yeah, especially when it's supposed to be just dialogue, but also in every single reply, 500 words to, to reply to something it happening in a scene with 500 words. There's so much purple prose that is happening. Mm -hmm. and so much rep repetition that is happening like you that's boring I, I could not use 500 words to describe what's happening in our conversation right now no it would be <laughs> that would be crazy it would be like the most boring piece of writing in the world god and this is a really fascinating conversation so like <laughs> <laughs> well all of Think ours about are that next time guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I see some good comments in the chat. Like Eric is saying he was in a role play where if someone wrote like a certain amount of paragraphs, you had to match that or add more to it. And so like oh, stuff would just balloon. Like that sounds insane. Like who came up with that rule? I'm, I can't believe that. What? <laughs> My paragraphs would be one sentence. Yeah. One sentence each paragraph. Yeah. <laughs> so that, not by, a full paragraph. Because by the end, it would be insane. <laughs> and imagine I this is a CRP. That. So imagine trying to write a fight scene with that structure like, what i'm such a procrastinator anyway because life is stressful right now so i'm like how much i don't want rp to feel like work sometimes it is work as a, as a mob that's what you sign up for as someone as like a hobby you're you're signing up for a commitment but you don't want rp to feel like no work, work. and if you're forced to write 12 paragraphs every response please kill me at that point Ugh. yeah gross Gross. own personal opinion if you like it cool i guess i we won't be writing can't together, relate so can't relate i'm so sorry i'm sure you're a beautiful person on the inside and out but can't relate <laughs> probably like wouldn't want to write with you either landon it's like it's fine because it's cool because there are some times that i'm fine with one sentence replies <laughs> me too i mean not every single time but certain no, threads like is. that's just what it what happens it's fine yeah and sometimes those are really like all i can provide Yep. And then so, I think, and I think like, like what Naomi, what you're saying, the first RP that you joined had a rule that you had to have at least one multi-para thread going at all times. I've seen those rules too. I think they're damaging in a very similar way as the, as the word count rules, because they force well, people to write way more than what the scene actually requires. Also, as a mod, who the fuck wants to track that? Not me. I don't want to track yes. half the stuff we track now. Everything we track is only, only because I know it will make the role play better. The I don't want to do any of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this point, it's like, okay, I hate tracking my own points, <laughs> let alone everybody else's. Yep, yep. <laughs> if we had to start tracking paragraphs and, and how many threads one person has, I'd die. I would literally die. Yeah, <sighs> it would be so much work. I would never do that. We're being very dramatic today. We are. I'm not sorry at all for the audience. It's because we started it's, out. It's, too coffee. it's because we started out <laughs> talking about crappy teachers. That's why we're yeah, being so dramatic. I'm really just like hyped up because I love talking about crappy teachers. <laughs> if um, you're enjoying this, go watch our um, education episode after this one. <laughs> oh my god! Or rec or just be like, I want to hear Landon talk about crappy teachers even more. I have so many stories, guys. As as a teacher too, like I can I can no one listens to this at work, so I can a hundred percent just shit on my colleagues. There you go. Um, Hopefully they not. never find it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use different names. It'll be fine. Most of it will be made up because I'm a writer. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, oh, so um, the other thing that has to do with like your actual writing and and the substance piece of it. Um, if you make a mistake because you forgot to include something or you contradicted yourself or whatever, because sometimes it's really hard uh, it, when everything in RP is first draft, um, yeah. you, everything's a first draft, which means that dialogue and, and that's what makes it exciting. That's what we love RP is because it is all very like reactionary. Yeah. You get that um, emergent but, storytelling. You can't get anywhere else. 
Yeah, but halfway through, sometimes you're like, oh, this was a mistake to go down this this way. Um, sometimes that, that feels like it. And sometimes, especially if you had plans or even if it's just a little detail that then your partner decided to like, okay, so uh, sorry, thinking of an example, um, you're doing a fight scene and you forget to guard your stomach um, or you forget to write that your character guards their stomach. Uh, and then the opposite character punches your character in the stomach. You can't, you have to accept that that's what's happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's one of those rare things with art that is particularly just in RP because normally if you're solo writing or even co-writing with, or co-writing with a book at some other point in time, you can plan out the whole fight before you write it. Yeah. Um, and you can also go back go and back make and changes be because like, it's... Oh, I should probably have him cover his stomach. Yeah. Um but you can't in RP. Yep. And it's one of those things where it's like, just got to accept it and move on. <laughs> yep. Yep. And um, that is one thing with role play. And now, and the other thing I think what people get scared of is like, what if I make a really big mistake that like super affects my character or the other character? I think the other piece of like not stressing about making mistakes is knowing that like, if it really is truly something unacceptable, Y'all can retcon it like it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. But I think there's also a um, level of accepting being a good writer is sometimes just accepting the fact that you made a mistake um, and you have to go with it. And because a lot of the times, A, if you continue, if you are that person who sits there and goes, I don't like how this is going, we need to retcon it, and you consistently do that, um, yeah. Well, you kind of kill the momentum if you're constantly doing that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we've and I've met a couple people or a couple people who who wants to control other people's and other characters' actions. Yeah. Um, who either will out of character sit there and go, your character can't do that because of X Y Z, or in character basically go, your character can't do that because of X Y Z, <laughs> even though they opened themselves up for that because they realized they made a mistake later on. Yeah. Um, you can't, yeah, you can't take that, you can't, like, correct your mistakes in character. Um, and then, can, and know when to, and know when it's important enough to correct your mistakes out of character. Sometimes you can, but every mistake that you make, sometimes you just gotta let it go. Yeah, let it go. Let it go, like Elsa. Let it go. And be okay. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, Katie had a good comment that I just want to highlight for a second. Um, she says, I'm always thankful when I make a minor mistake in my response and the person's reply picks it up and deals with it for me. At that moment, it's like, this is a great partner. I totally agree. When they, when, when you get the vibe from someone that they're like, they know you made a mistake and they're not going to like call you out or make a big deal about it. They're just going to come in and help you fix it. Like that's a magical moment. It is. Yeah. It's really a nice moment. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I have love that. To that. Other than, like, there are some partners who are just awesome who let you do that. Yeah. And they know that um, it's not a big deal and it's just a little mistake and you didn't mean to write that and it's whatever. And we're just going to move on and, and be okay with it. Yep. Yeah. But I think that that's also, like, it comes down to our wonderful control issues as writers. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> being a good RPer and being a good writer as an RPer is allowing your character to have mistakes made. Yeah. And that realizing that as a writer, because this is a first draft, you are going to make mistakes. You're not going to think of everything. Yeah. Um, you're going to write you stuff that you're like, do. gosh, if I were to do that again, I'd do it different. Like, that's going to happen. Yeah. And, and sometimes you have to let go of that control, too, in order to make it a good story. Um, because that's the other thing with this is that it's about substance. So sometimes it's like, oh my God, I made a mistake. I don't want anyone to highlight that mistake, but this person is highlighting this mistake and now I feel embarrassed or I feel like I've lost control or I feel like I'm not going to win this fight or X, Y, and Z yep. or my character is not going to win this fight or X, Y, and Z. And sometimes you just have to sit there and go, the better story in this moment in time is that my character doesn't win this fight. Yeah, sometimes it because, is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but a lot of people sometimes have trouble with that. So my advice is to be a better uh, RP writer 
is to let it go. Yeah. Like if you have, if that mistake happens, then just let it happen. And, and, and that's the story that you're going to tell. Like that is so, totally valid in a lot of cases. Yeah. So. Uh, do you want to move on to uh, bad advice we've heard? Yeah. So, okay. This is the actual spicy part. <laughs> <laughs> um, we wanted to talk about some advice that we have seen either passed around on the internet or that's been given to us over the years that we have come to decide is actually bad advice and people should either stop spreading it or they should explain it differently. <laughs> so, um, so what, so what is our first one? What is the first one that we want to do? Oh, that's a great question. Sorry. I am, <laughs> I've had so much caffeine that I almost feel drunk. So hi uh -oh. guys. <laughs> no, well, it's fine. I do know, I know one for sure that I wanted to mention. Um, oh, I have it right I... here, but it's, Say like talking about said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I see this advice all the time. Like here's some words to replace said or don't repeat the word said so much. And I'm here to tell you that that advice is bad and incomplete. <laughs> it is not good <laughs> advice. It is not good advice. So, okay. I'm going to give a small defense of the word said for a moment. Said is a very short common, easy to digest word. When you're, when the person is reading what you've written and they read said, their eyes can just skip right over it. They don't have to spend time on the word said. They can just read it and move on. So there is no situation where like saying said multiple times in your passage is going to be like Bad. Like that's when people give you like word lists to replace said when they say, you know, you use the word said too much like This is incomplete. That's not what they're saying. Okay, that's not what they're saying So here's when you should actually replace said if you're doing things like said quietly or said loudly or said angrily like that doesn't read very well instead what you should say is things like whispered or yelled or growled or things like that. Like anytime that you're saying said plus an adverb, I think it's important to think like, is there another dialogue marker I could use where instead of two words here, I just have one word. Okay. And so, I'm going to, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, Sorry. you're good. You're good. I was going to say, I'm going to agree with that partially. Because I also think it's important that having said adverb is very different than having another word. Said quietly and whispered are actually two different things. Yeah, but there um, might be a different verb that you could use instead. Like, I just absolutely. think that that's a moment you should be pulling out your thesaurus and thinking, like, is there a better way to say said quietly that describes what I'm trying to say? But not, and I'm going to sit there and go, absolutely. But always, not all, not always. Yeah, of course, um, definitely not right, always. And I think that, that that's the important part of that too, is that mm -hmm. yes, if you continually do it and it is a pattern, find those words, find different ways of doing it, but do it with purpose. Like words like whisper are almost overused, I feel like in writing because everyone wants to have it as used quietly, but how somebody whispers and how somebody <laughs> talks quietly, two different things. I think maybe, I did, you re -read did you reread Twilight? Did you reread Twilight recently? They whisper all the time in those books for like no reason. I don't understand why they're whispering all the time. <laughs> also, no one can hear whispering. Like that's the whole point of whispering. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, or yelling and screaming and, and talking loudly. Like those are all three very different emotionalities. Mm -hmm. There's also three very different tone and three very different levels of talking. Mm -hmm. um, so, and sorry, this is a tangent that I like to get on to. It also in defense of the word said, um, we learn where we learn that said is a bad word to use in writing is when in writing, we are learning how to put emotionality into our narrative writing. Like how do you um, make the feels? How do you make yes. the feels? So teachers sit there and go, don't use just said, think of other ways to use it. And the easiest way to explain it to kids is said is bad or said is not something you want to repeat. Said is boring. And 
because of our young adaptable brains we then turn it into said is bad yeah so then you um, see it perpetuated all over the internet because that's where all the teenagers are right now repeating the things that they heard in english class without the full context and understanding of why their teacher told them that absolutely and i understand why it's being taught because like i said in the beginning writing is not a natural process yeah you don't naturally know how to put emotionality into your writing mm -hmm. that is something that has to be taught yeah um and and saying and teaching that you don't have to just say said is an important lesson and an important part of writing narratively um but it it is like this idea that we cling on to um and said is perfect it's neutral like you said you can just like glaze over it but yeah. at the same time like it's no one no one cares <laughs> <laughs> yep yep absolutely absolutely and um excuse me said is bland is what i was told from my english teacher yeah i i feel like that's kind of how i've heard it too and i don't know it's been a long time since i've been in school i don't know if that's what teachers actually said but that's definitely what i heard them say you know so it's just like when you're when you're younger you don't necessarily understand why the teacher is giving you the advice that they're giving you because i yeah. think what the, what teachers also know a little bit that you don't have insight into is that you're going to figure it out you know you're going to figure out that the advice was incomplete because you still need the practice when you're a teenager when you're at that level you know so yeah and this isn't, i mean these 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 lessons are lessons that I am, or that my co-teacher in fifth grade is teaching. I, my kids learn said is bad and not to say said all the time in fifth grade. Yeah. I'm sure it'll also be taught in sixth grade and in seventh grade because that's narrative writing exists in all three of those levels. Yeah, but if you go to a um, college level class, it's not explained in that way because you've practiced so much more by then. The word said is never even blanched at. Like if you're in, like for me, for my college level of creative writings, they, are, they sit there and go, maybe you should find a little bit of a better word. But I have never been like, but like even then it's, it wasn't about said. Said was like, whatever. Yeah. Like that wasn't <laughs> was the thing. It was like, just like, this sentence is boring. I think you could jazz it up, you know? Yeah. Or build emotion or like find a way to build emotion. And that's when you can sit there and go, oh, well, instead of said, I could say something else. Right. Because, like, because they know. Because they know, exactly, because they know that you know enough that they just need to tell you the end goal. They don't need to tell you how to fix it. You already have that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. No worries. Bye, Eric. Oh, and hey, King. So happy you're here with us today. Um, I just, I know Eric is no longer here, but I did want to point out something he said. Sure. And that was what he said was, uh, said is bland, but bland isn't always bad. And yeah. I think that as kids, we hear the word bland and we go, Oh, that's a bad thing. We don't want to be boring. Sometimes you want to be adult, boring, though. As an adult and as an adult writer, if you recognize where the importance is in your sentence and in your story, is it important how they said it or what is being said? Mm -hmm. Because at the same time, you also don't want to highlight both of those if it's taking attention away from what is being said. Yeah. Like, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it totally makes sense. Sometimes the dialogue is so important that you want the reader to just, like, gloss over the dialogue tag. And so you put in said. Yep. Yep. Sorry, I'm reading what Jane says. She is the actual writing teacher here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she is. Okay, can, can you read it yeah, out? Jane. Is it good? Yeah, she says, Unfortunately, narrative writing standards are few and untested on EOC high-stakes tests. Yeah. Um, you learn to mix up said in middle school, and then there's no time to push your story writing as you're older. Any upper level teacher doing this is silly, and I don't think they ever did. I'm trying to think of creative writing classes and writing classes that I took at upper schools. Unfortunately, the thing about like secondary school and writing is that it's not about how to write, it's about how to write essays. Yeah. Um, you're writing a lot of essays. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, I'm trying to think most of the time it was like poetry um there wasn't any narrative writing not Absolutely. much not unless so, you joined like a, a a writing club then i think you got some narrative writing yeah but even then it was like there wasn't it was probably developing plot rather than and character development rather than really the mechanics of writing because everyone assumes you know how to write at that point yeah no i think more what we're talking about is like yes. like what happens it's the advice people get in grade school 
and then people go and pass off this grade school level advice in articles on the internet as if this is like some kind of authority because you can't tell on the internet that some 15 year old wrote this article you know and so then people start passing it around as good writing advice because the way that you when you publish online when you publish something online it needs to kind of tie into like a little bit what's already out there so that you can like get that crossover readership and things like that so this advice about said being bad even though it starts from a, a from a decent place and it's really just intended for teenagers then it gets passed off as like good advice if you google good advice on uh, online and that's not great yeah and like and i just and not to correct what you said but like not even teenagers like i think that that's something that's that we need to highlight that this is 10 11 and 12 year olds yeah sometimes so yeah so it's like pre-teenagers yeah yeah exactly <laughs> when you see the word don't use said so much that advice is, is directed towards 11 12 and 13 year olds or 10 11 12 13 year olds because they don't know how to do emotion in their stories yeah not yet <laughs> exactly exactly so, so yeah that anytime that you see that advice about said being bad or boring or whatever know that it is incomplete they're not giving you the whole story that's not why they're saying that they're not saying it because you shouldn't use said you should use said there are plenty of times you should totally use said yeah um and I, I, I wonder if we're going to disagree on this one, because I think I had a different point. Uh, talking about names and pronouns. Oh, yeah. Um, so you have don't you don't overuse names and pronouns. Well, that's the advice. That's the advice people oh, give. Oh, got you. OK, OK, OK. Perfect. Yeah. I was just like, um. <laughs> no, no, no. My OK, so here's the point that I want to make with that. People, this is another piece of advice that you hear online or in grade school or things like that. That's just not really true in my opinion or it's incomplete you hear like don't overuse pronouns don't overuse the character's name as like the subject of the sentence right and then what what people do because the easiest way to not do that right is to replace it right so instead of saying the character's name you'll say like the blonde or you'll say like the boy or you'll say like you know whatever some descriptor of that person the but, curly haired yeah 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 male. yeah or whatever <laughs> so what that does though is like say you say like the blonde so when you call a character the blonde you're drawing attention to that particular feature of theirs and if there's no reason to draw attention to that particular feature it reads really freaking weird so this is what you should do instead when you see that advice this doesn't mean replace the words what it means is vary your sentence structure. So yeah, you shouldn't say the character's name or the pronoun over and over again in your prose because that shouldn't be the subject of every single sentence. That's the answer. Yeah. Um, I have such... Okay, so here's the thing. Um... The more that I have studied and the more that I have uh, have tried to become more mainstream solo authoring, mm -hmm. uh, the more I've realized that things like referring to characters as the blonde or the curly haired singer or blah, 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 um, the more fan fiction -y that is. Yeah. It happens, huge trope ha that happens in very fan fiction writing. Um, because editors will cut that shit out. <laughs> yes, editors won't let you do that. They'll make you vary your sentence structure. Yes, they will absolutely make you vary your sentence structure. Um, I also think that on top of this, there is this idea of, like, that you can overuse names and, like, names in particular. That there's there was, like, this advice that was going around that being, like, don't use their name so much in your writing. Make sh If you're writing from third person or whatever, um... Make sure that you use pronouns. And I gotta tell you, that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I don't do <laughs> that. <laughs> saying, use their names in every single sentence. Um, but especially if you have a a queer story that's happening or a, or a story that's happening with more than one male or female character in a scene, uh, using just pronouns is hella fucking confusing. It's super confusing. Um, if you've got two guys in a scene or two girls in a scene and you're using like he and she and you, you start to not be able to tell which he or which she they're referring to. 
And it gets even more confusing when you've got like a non-binary character that's using they, them pronouns. And yep. then it's like, wait, are you using they, them as in the personal pronoun for that character? Or are you using they, them as in like unknown gender of this third other person? Or are you using it to refer to like the other character? Because we use it for um, for objects when the, the when the gender is unimportant as well. So it gets very confusing. Like just repeat the name. <laughs> Yeah, just don't create people. confusion. <laughs> there's not, there's no issue in that. And I think we are very much taught not to, and there's a lot of advice about not to, but I, it, it's kind of like said, the name is actually very, like, gets over. It just lets your brain know who we're talking about with definite, like, as a definite. Yeah, you can, like, skip um, right over it most of the time. But, but no one notices it. I guarantee you no one notices how many times you say the word James or how many times you say the word jim or or any of these names in a sen in not a sentence but in a paragraph on a page yeah because it, it, it is it keeps the story straight and if you're not filling it with the blonde or the winged boy or the xyz is not making it any better no it's not uh, it just makes it seem like fan fiction like somebody that doesn't understand the advice they've been given yeah exactly um, so I think that that is also with the overuse of names and pronouns, it, there's also like a hyper focus on names and there's no such thing as overusing them. No, there's not. There's not. And there's another, <laughs> there's another like overused thing that I wanted to touch on too. Um, I know sometimes we get advice of like adverbs are overused and, and writing advice to cut adverbs. And I think that's another thing that like is poor or incomplete advice often. I think people say like cut adverbs because again a lot of times you can say the same thing by just using a different verb also if you are looking to cut words because you've written too much adverbs are like the easiest thing to cut you know but that doesn't mean like adverbs are bad or that if there's adverbs in your writing your writing is bad um adverbs are still very useful and if it that's what fits what you're trying to do then just then use them like I, I feel like the advice makes people scared to use adverbs and and yeah. adverbs aren't bad and they're not lazy yeah. either so they're they're certainly not bad they're certainly not lazy i think that it does come from this idea of expanding vocabulary yes um of, of writing interesting vocabulary but at the same time i think that's a very certain kind of genre of writing yeah. too that that not every like popular fiction I think is more likely to use adverbs than um than like fiction in general or fantasy like ner like literary uh, fiction or whatever you want to call it yeah whatever you want to call um just because that's the style right it's more casual and we use adverbs in our talking life whether we recognize that we do or not um so I think that that it just adds like a casuality to it which is not a bad thing yep. um. I think that that's also something that we could talk about, like that we could have mentioned earlier is the fact that like, there's this idea that writing can't be casual. Yeah, um, like formal writing is the best writing, but not necessarily. And I can tell you that some of the best books that I have read have been read, have been written with a casuality yeah. uh, to them that have yeah. had a very like almost insider feel. And it's made the characters feel real because formal writing sometimes makes characters feel stiff. Mm -hmm. It does sometimes. Yeah. So if you're writing from that like omnip omnipotent perspective instead of from the character's perspective and um, and you're kind of like using that very formal style, it can make you feel like disconnected from the characters in the story. Yeah. Um, very quickly, I'm sorry to bounce back and forth, but I wanted to touch on something and I just remembered it for oh. uh, pronouns and names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that this overuse of pronouns and names advice is a little bit um, more casual when it comes to RP, as far as like, as far as like encouragement of using names more. Yeah. I do think that as like an advice for how to write good RP, you sh your first sentence should always include the character's name. I agree. <laughs> clarity. <laughs> yeah. um, but because it is, because most RPs are written from third person um Oh my god, not omniscient. Limited, limited, third person limited. limited. Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm such a terrible English major. Um, third person no, limited. Third person limited. There is a very clear um, idea of 
whose perspective you're coming from and who he is related to or she is related to um, because you are controlling a particular character yeah. rather than having the omniscient view of it all. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can be a little bit more lax on using more pronouns than using names. However, still having that clarity, especially if you're like referring to several different keys or your character is having thoughts about other characters, it's always good to use those names. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's true. And I and I I like to have the character's name at the very beginning of a post in some way, shape or form, so that I know for sure who that character is that's that's, you know, speaking in that post. Um and I think sometimes that role players that we forget that um you know people aren't necessarily in our heads and we we tend to write too many pronouns and forget to list the character's name again <laughs> you know and uh and and i think it's i think it's a good thing to have the character's name in every single post so i i definitely am the person that probably uses the character's name too much and doesn't use pronouns enough as far as like a balance there Thing. And Katie just said the same thing that sh that she has a hard time using or not overusing characters' names. And I'm telling you, people, there's no, no one such cares. thing. Yeah, no one. No cares. one cares. Katie, I've like, never noticed. Every sentence, if it's every sentence and it starts to sound a little stagnant, depending on your sentence structure. But yeah, it's the sentence structure. Um, it's not the overuse of the name that it's causes not the that. Overuse of names. I guarantee you that a good piece of writing could use the character's name every single time it refers to the character, then not. Yeah, and you would never notice. You would never and you notice. Would never, you would never even think of it. You would never go, especially, and I have, and I, and I discovered this, I think, more when I started writing, solo writing a queer couple because they were both men. And so it really did challenge me to not use pronouns. <laughs> and I guarantee you, you will not notice. <laughs> yep. So, um, I mean, y'all uh, know I read. Oh. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, Brace, Bree says that, like, if you also hate writing the name James over and over again, nicknames. <laughs> nicknames work. Yeah, nicknames um, work, too. Especially if you're referring to another person's character. Um, and that also adds emotionality into it. Yes. That also, there and goes, you can know, like, you know, if she, if someone usually calls them Bree, I'm going to use this example just because Bree said it. Um, Rory usually calls James james in her head uh, unless she's mad then it's jim yeah. and so being able to tell that emotionality with that like you can play with that too and that will make it so you're not writing the same name over and over again if that makes you uncomfortable yeah but, but i mean y'all know i read everything i read everything in that in that role play and katie i have never noticed you overusing names never once like i don't i don't know <laughs> no, yeah i never notice not a thing use names yeah it's it'll okay. be good um and yeah, I mean, it's also like, okay, sorry. This is a, this is a soapbox that a little okay. bit. Okay. I feel like you're having a thought. A thought is occurring to you. A thought is occurring. They, they're they rare, but they happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, there's a, there's a lack of emotional connection with not using someone's name um, in writing. So in life, this can be purposeful, but it can also be subconscious. I have a story where I've written um, that the character doesn't have a name, so she is pronouned the entire time. And it's to make you feel disconnected from that character. Mm -hmm. And that happens if you don't use the name. Um, even if you are from their perspective, even if you are third person limited, that separation exists and it makes it you feel disconnected. Yeah. Use names. It adds to the comfortability. It adds to the connection with character. It, it lessens confusion. Use names. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> the only thing that you really, like all of this advice, what I think it really boils down to is what you should really be doing if you notice these things in your writing is that means you probably aren't varying your sentence structure enough. Like that at the end of the day, like that's really what it means is you need yeah. to vary your sentence structure up more if you are getting this feedback on your writing or if you reread your writing and you feel like it has these problems that means you don't have enough varied sentence structure which is so exhausting <laughs> yeah it is it's hard it's but... so hard and, and i struggle with it so much as far as um as far as like oh passive voice because like sentence structure also plays into passive voice yeah. Um, so sitting here and just being like, yeah, it's something that all writers struggle with because 
it's easy. Some sentences are easy and mm -hmm. some structures are easy. <laughs> but so, yeah, some are harder. Some are harder but than others to get them to sound good. But also remember that things like sentence structure and things like that are A, details that a lot of the times don't matter unless you really want them to matter. Because a lot of the times, unless you're writing publishable works, people won't pick up on. Yeah, they won't really care um, that much. Or they won't really care. Um, and also it's second draft shit. Yeah. <laughs> it, like it's not, it's actually not second draft shit. It's third draft shit. Sometimes, like, yeah. So, so a lot of the times when it comes to RP responses, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we never it even doesn't... get that far for anybody to care. We, yeah, we're giving this advice because if you really want to be a great writer, this is this is something that you can fix uh, if you want to feel like you're fixing it. But honestly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. No, and if you're using, like, if you're somebody that's, like, more of a writer and you're using role play as, like, a lot of practice, then if this is, if this if this idea is in your head and you can kind of start implementing it here and there in your role play, it's only going to make it easier when you're going back and editing, like, solo works that you've written. Yeah, and it's, um, it'll, good solo works, good practice. I mean, again, like you just said, if, if this is something that you are doing to improve your skills then awesome um but even then if you've practiced and you've become an amazing expert at this i guarantee you even if you like submitted a draft where you're like this is amazing people will still say mess up your sentence your sentence structure probably <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> an editor is definitely going to want to do stuff like that oh ha that's their literal job to do it yeah so yeah, that's that's our heart, hot take. Yeah. Um, before we move on to this next place, because we are we are actually coming up on um, oh, we're at an hour and a half. Yeah, but we're also we're on our last topic. So okay, I want to ask the audience if there is anything that advice that you've heard that has been bad that you would like to uh, say. Don't listen to this to make a good writer. Yeah, if you have some, drop it in the chat. We'll talk about it after we're done talking about this thing. But I know that there's a lot of advice that we might have A, not heard, or B, don't even think it's bad advice, but or haven't even thought about it's bad advice, but we'd love to hear it. Yeah, because I know there's other bad advice out there. Like, that's a thing. I mean, I see it all the time. If you follow any, like, writing help blogs or things like that, some of their articles, they're just the advice is just not good, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Um. All right. Our next part of, of the stream is talking about parts of the story. Um, and advice about that. So I think that you wrote down this wonderful piece of advice, which I really love, and that is you don't have to start at the beginning. Uh, instead, start where you feel inspired and you'll fill in the gaps. And this can be as small as a reply and as big as a novel. Yeah. I think um, even it happens in role play too. Like I've had role plays where yeah. we just knew that we wanted these two characters and we really didn't have a specific like whole plot that we wanted to do we just had this one scene that we wanted to do and jumped into it and i and that can kind of like unlock that relationship to to help like me get to know that other writer get to know the the pair of characters that we're going to play stuff like that and um and that can be really helpful for those initial stages especially until you get to where you actually want to you know write like a whole big story with somebody absolutely and this could be like sitting there and going, oh, someone said an amazing piece of dialogue in their most recent reply that really inspired me to say this piece of dialogue, but I don't know where else to start. And I don't want to start off the th reply with this piece of dialogue. Um, so I'm going to write down this piece of dialogue and then I'll fill in the rest from there. Like it literally can be, hey, we're going to build these characters and figure out what the climax is and build everything around that to... I really like this one line. <laughs> mm -hmm. It can be. Like, I have had definitely situations where it's like, I write the reply, but um, it doesn't come out at first in the order. <laughs> yeah. And I have to rearrange the sentences after I've written everything. You know, that happens Absolutely. to me all the time. Oh, my favorite is I know how to, because if you know me, then you know I like to create tragedy. Um, someone, someone put the thing in the chat, um, <laughs> but, uh, I, I like to create tragedy, which means I know how I'm going to sucker punch 
the last line of what this reply is going to be. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to literally write backwards. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you write uh, that last line where you know you want it to end, and then you go back and fill in the rest. Yeah. Um, so sit there and be like, okay, I am going to just do it. Like, the, I really want to make them hit them in the feels. And so this is the last line. How do I get there? How do yeah. I get from what they wrote to this line? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Brie got you. Thank even you, even though even though you're lurking, <laughs> even though you're lurking, still got us. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and Brie said that my brain doesn't always work in order. It just be that way, and that's true. Oh. Sometimes, I mean, like I said in the beginning, writing is art. Take what inspires you. That's what's going to make you the best writer. Is that you are inspired by something. You want to write something that is meaningful, and you focus on that, and then go forth. Oh, you can't really unlurk. That's okay, though. No worries, Brie. You just start typing in the chat. You've yeah. done perfect. Yeah, Karen you, was, yeah. just decided to call you out. It's fine. <laughs> I thought she was still lurking. I didn't realize. Oh, well, my bad. <laughs> yeah, um, you're so terrible, Karen. Oops. <clears throat> yeah, but absolutely, absolutely. Like, sometimes, like, I'm sure that you've read books like this before, especially, like, you know, just cheap little paperback books where, like, you get to, like, the scene. And if you've written yeah. books before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You don't get ideas for like the whole book in concept. You get like a flash of this scene and you want to like expand that into something. So I've definitely had that experience reading. I've had that experience writing where it's like you get you get the scene and it's like the major cool scene that you know is like what it's all about and what you're really excited to write. Um, and you know that you got to build up to that scene and you know that you got to put stuff after like the scene. But what I'm telling you is that you have my permission to start at the scene. It's yep. okay. Writing in order is not required because especially in solo writing, by the time you get finished with it to release it to anybody, you'll have all that stuff in there. People aren't reading it along with you in solo writing so just yeah, start with what you want i don't know a single person who is like mm, you know what i know i want to write a book and i want to start from the beginning no <laughs> that's not the this way that the really ideas happen start to, this would be a really great start to a novel no one has ever mm -hmm. written a novel that way i'm sure they've had thoughts where it'd be like that'd be a good place to start the idea that i've already had um, but no one's like, I feel super inspired to write a novel and here is the beginning. <laughs> yeah, no, that doesn't happen. Like, um, I know I mentioned Twilight earlier in the stream, but, um, mention it again because, uh, the author has an interview where she mentions this and she basically just had this fantasy of a girl and a vampire laying in a field, frankly speaking about how much they love each other. And that was her the scene <laughs> that created perfect. twilight right yeah she didn't think that about like scene. she didn't think about and like how be... sorry i keep no you go um I, she doesn't think about like how oh bella's a sad girl that moved to forks and then instantly made friends in high school like no she doesn't that's not the scene and that's not where she started yeah, and you can read it when you get there. When you've, you've any of you have ever picked up Twilight recently, you can, and I haven't, but I know I it's in a revival it right now. <laughs> yeah, um, you you can read the scene. It is not the climax of the book. It is not the most important scene in the book. It has very little character development or anything in the book, <laughs> but it is the scene, and, and you, you can, can tell. Feel, you can feel the importance to the author uh, with the scene and, and the characters. Yeah. Yeah, so you can start and there. It's okay. Start there. Do write what you want when you want to. Mm -hmm. Um, and on on top of that, that kind of that that kind of streams into this I other idea is that you, that you need to have a goal, mm -hmm. um, for your writing. You need to have a purpose. Uh, something you're you're either heading towards, like connecting A and B. I have these two. I have two of the scenes, and I need to connect A and B together. Or, or it could be like, I want to end this thread at this certain area, or I want to, I have this, this line that I really want to put in there. How do I get there? Mm -hmm. These are all acceptable goals. Mm -hmm. um, and even just like 
writing to write, like to have words on a page, that's also a goal. But there needs to be a goal in all writing. Yeah. You have to have something that you want to say. Like, and it doesn't, it, uh, it's, there's not a value judgment on like what that thing is, but I don't really, I, I don't personally really understand people that are, that are writing that don't know anything about what they want to say or convey. I, and I think that, I think that some of this is like blank page, right? Like when, but once you start writing like that will get fixed, you know, but if you've already written a whole bunch of your draft and you still don't know what you want to say, then I feel like that should be a moment where you kind of reevaluate because if you don't know what you want to say or why you're doing the writing or what the point is, then no wonder you feel lost, right? So at some point, it's important to make sure to check in with yourself that you do have some kind of semblance of a goal for your characters or for you or for the story overall or whatever. You know, you have some points you want to make or some character that you just love and you want to get out into the world or something. And, and while this is not the most valid goal, it is a goal. And sometimes, some weeks, uh, the goal is to just not be on activity check. <laughs> and, and that's okay. Yeah. Like, like, we talked about this at the beginning, that something is better than nothing. Yep. And sometimes that is the goal. And that is still a goal. Is it the best goal for the best writing? Probably not. No. But it can be a goal to sit there and go, I just need to get through this right now because that's what I can do. Yep. Yep. For sure. And I think in solo writing, you can say, like, that's why a lot of writers make, like, word goals for themselves. They might be very small word goals, but they're still word goals, right? They might say, like, I want to write 500 words a week. And, like, that's a pretty small amount. Most anybody can do that. But sometimes, like, literally things happen and that's all you can do. Just get that 500 words for the week and make sure you've met that. And that's valid as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And some people that works, some people it doesn't. Um, the goal of, I find for me personally, the goal of finishing something is a really tough goal because there's a lot of baby steps that come in there. But for some people that works. For some people, the goal is to have a finished book, mm -hmm. um, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know um i guess for me most of the goal is to make sure that i'm continuing to inspire other people i mean my most fun part of role playing is uh setting up a, the events and things like that and like releasing them and seeing like what all kinds of crazy amazing stuff y'all come up with based on based on that you know yeah and i every single every single um ship that i have typically um my ship partner and i have a scene or a goal or something that we want to get to yeah. um it's kind of that combination of the scene but also the goal yeah <laughs> um the, they can be the same thing too they can be um, yeah and for me that's just that's what inspires me like um i was just said it in the chat but like i love i love creating a character for the sole purpose of killing them mm -hmm. uh in atlantis even though we didn't get to write it and even though we didn't get there uh i wrote jimmy potter because he was gonna die and that was gonna be the scene and I, it was very clear from the beginning that this man was gonna die <laughs> um he was destined he was he was dead before he was created um and that was the goal that was the purpose was i really wanted to get people to care about this character so that when i killed him off there would be tears yep <laughs> unfortunately the role play died before we got to that point but it was a good goal and it kept you it motivated was, and going for him it was probably it was probably for the best for my own personal sanity <laughs> at that point um this last year has been a little rough that killing off characters is a little hard right now yeah um but you never know i could wake up on a tuesday morning and just choose violence you, it you could. it's been known to happen to me before <laughs> you, you you very well could it it's it's a thing <laughs> um i also think that this is uh, what makes a really good writer for our last point is um, the art of an ending. Oh. Of of knowing when to stop. Knowing when to stop a reply. Knowing when to stop a thread. Uh, knowing when to stop a plot so it's not completely drawn out. Uh, that is something that you can, it takes time, but you can learn 
is when is the moment to end even if it's in the middle of a conversation still sometimes middle of conversation endings are the most impactful sometimes they happen in books and movies all the time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) like it can feel Uh it can feel awkward because you know we're writing it you know as role players and it can sometimes feel like oh well i can't end it here because the conversation's not really over um but we're not writing things to be like real life we're writing them to be dramatic or at least i am so i think that there's something to be said for that to be thinking about like well you know in in movies and tv shows and books they don't always like say bye when they hang up the phone do i really need to write bye is that kind of boring or is that necessary you know um i think that's important to to consider when it comes to our writing is ending doesn't necessarily mean that there's not another scene coming up ending doesn't mean that you're never going to write with that person again or write with that character again like ending doesn't have to feel like negative and i think for some role players it it does because i've watched role players just play out the same scene for like months and months and months and not because the the scene was still going and they were being slow or something like that but because they were both terrified to ask the other if it was time to end (laughs) you know yep i've i have been in those circles like yeah. i'm not gonna pretend that i'm i always knew how to end something yeah um, i still have a really tough time of of cliffhanger endings um yeah. to sit there and go like oh my god i'm pregnant and then like cut to black the end. <laughs> da, da, da. Um, those, those are really impactful and if that is the purpose that you want you want something to be impactful knowing how to end that is a good thing Mm -hmm. um also especially because if you want people to like be excited about it uh wait a day and a half (laughs) 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 um it doesn't always have to end a thread doesn't always have to end when a character walks away or when there's a decision made um because sometimes also like those conversations are boring i'm pregnant I don't know what I'm going to like. And then from I'm pregnant, if you're, it's not an expected thing. And sometimes things like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And, oh my God, this decision, like all of that can come across boring to some, for some writers, for some threads. Like, especially if it's like this, I don't know what I'm going to do thing. And that's just going to be repeated for the next six replies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just helpful to end with, oh my God, I'm pregnant. Yeah. And that is very hard for role players because we want that emergent storytelling. I think that it can it can be much more compelling from the role player's perspective to play that out and let the characters decide that. And because what this is what you have to do instead, right? Like if you're going to have that dramatic ending, what you have to do instead is get in the other person's DMs and chat about it. You know, make work it out out of character, how the characters feel, and all that stuff, right? Which is not as necessarily always appealing. Um, but then it comes back to to the whole thing of like if you want to do it that way, right? Like if you want it to happen in in emergent storytelling where the characters really talk about it and work it out, then what you have to do is have like you know those quick shorter replies so that you can kind of get through that conversation without it dragging on and on and on, right? Exactly. So it's a it's a balance of like what do you want to do? How fast do you want to reply? Who do you really want making the decisions here? You know, you guys versus letting the characters talk it out and and all the different ways that you can do that and still have a good ending are going to vary. Because if you are going to have the characters have that conversation instead of just a dramatic then fade to black, well, then you got to go faster, right? Yep. Ugh. It's just, it, it's like, I think that TV shows have the... TV shows have the wonderful ability to have end of episodes that they're limited to an hour. Yeah. Which means they can end on things like that, right? Yep. Uh, Movies have the ability to scene change or even point of view change um, where, you know, one person is, you're you're following multiple storylines a lot of the time in a lot of movies. Uh, So you have the ability to like do that dramatic, (gasps) go to another storyline. Yeah. Uh, Books have chapter endings. Yeah. So you, I mean, and that's something that also in writing, and I remember my professor talking to us about this, is that it's really uncomfortable to end halfway through a conversation. So that even in writing, it, or even in solo writing, it's hard. Mm-hmm. But you do it for the impact, and you have that ability to do chapter writing. You you don't have that in RP. Not really. uh, it's something that you have to initiate yourself completely and have your partner be on board. 
yeah, you both have to come to that decision that that's what's best for the scene. And that can be really hard because, you know, yeah. what if the other person says, no, I want them to play it out. You know, what if the other person is one of those people that like doesn't want the scene to end and just wants to role play one scene forever and ever and ever, you know, and they never want to change scenes or anything like that. Like some role players, that's how they write. That's what they do. They do the same scene for forever and ever and ever. And they play every single second and moment of what's happening between these characters, you know? Um, so it, it can be an awkward conversation, but I think it's an important conversation, which is why we had a whole episode about ending tips. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. But it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. So if that, if this is like, some of this is speaking to you and you're like, gosh, I don't know, then go check out that episode on endings. Yes. So that is, that brings us to the end of our advice. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to fertilize these peppers real quick, and then oh. we can do the article. Yeah. So. I need I need some more gold coins in this game. And once I close this game, I got to look at also what y'all voted on. <laughs> I think Sims is winning. Was that last was that the last thing landed? Yeah, Sims Sims is Sims is winning, although things uh things have taken a turn. Okay, well, I'll go look at that in a second as well. How how long do we have? What do you mean? Oh, I was looking at this article, but I don't actually, I decided not to do it. Okay. <laughs> There's like a match your, match your, uh, are you a baboon, bear, or bison? Find out which animal personality matches your yours in a free fun quiz. Oh. I was like, oh, that could be fun. But it could really. be. We could do a quiz if you want to. I'm not opposed. <laughs> okay, you changed your mind. Okay. Welcome to Landon. It's chaos today. <laughs> That's okay. Star brought to you by Starbucks. Honestly, two coffees is a lot. <laughs> I don't drink half caffeine most of the time. And yet... I do feel like you're going a little bit more speedy than normal, so um, I definitely think that's true. <laughs> All right, yeah, let me I save this game. The rest of the day, simply trying to stay alive. <laughs> Sometimes it's 2021, like that. so that's and there's a global pandemic, so that's harder than something. True. Hmm. All right. Switch desktop. All right. There's not like a lot of good news out in the world at the moment, guys. That's not, that I can't dropped, be true. That can't I be true. I dropped an article. I dropped an article in the thing, but I'm telling you, <laughs> where I where I am looking, uh, there is a lot of like depression happening. It's fine. Gosh. Okay. Let me look at this. Drag you over here. I'm gonna go check out how far y'all are on those community goals before I pull up the article. But I don't want to, I don't want to accidentally dox myself or anything, so I'm just pulling it up on the other screen first. You mean you don't want to worry about that today on top of everything else? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so here is, here is how that's going. So yeah, Sims is winning by quite a lot. I should have made it higher. I didn't know y'all would be like so gung ho on one particular one. Um, but yeah, it looks like Sims is winning. So if you guys, um, if anybody's like out here, like, no, I want one of the others. That means you definitely need to come to Thursday's stream and dump points into the others um, while people aren't paying attention because those are the, the artistic licenses, the lower attended streams. So <laughs> or, just, or just have us just give other people what they want. I mean, <laughs> it's looking like Sims. It's looking like Sims 2 for our next game on Interstage Window. We've still got several more episodes of Viva Pinata, so it's going to be a minute. And um, and don't worry, these other two I will do as well. So, um, you know, if one of these goes pretty quick, then we'll play it on Artistic License uh, coming up after Final Fantasy. We'll do it like that. All right, let's look at this article. Okay. Like I said. The news has been really depressing. This is what we got. <laughs> Nothing restores a river or a local economy like removing a dam. Oh, that's nice. So um, I kind of picked this also because I'm a little skewed. We're studying ecosystems and the effects on ecosystems in my class. Okay. So I, this is in, in my, in, in, yeah. So I thought that this was a really cool way of looking at it as far as like um, 
there were 69 dams that were removed uh, in two in last year, and it's opened up like 624 miles of river and free oh. flow. Um, and because of that, uh, there's been like a huge increase of salmon populations, as well as uh, other animals like cutthroat trout, bull trout, some bass. So a lot of up spike in um, fish, which has been great, considering that there's been a lot of, at least here uh, up north, there's been a lot of uh, fish, slow, like there hasn't been a lot of fish in the rivers recently. Mm -hmm. So it's just really cool to see that. And then because of that, there's a lot of fishing and a lot of uh, tourism, touristism? No, nope, that's the word. Tourism. Uh, yep, thank you. <laughs> Coming back to be able to fish. Oh, I love um, that. And a bunch of people being able to sell their fish again. So it's like recovered the uh, industry in that way. Like I said, kind of boring news week, guys. No, but this is good. Happen. So so it finally says it here at the at the end of the article that I wanted to, to highlight this. And so luckily it says it. There are so many dams in our country that are just oh, yeah. sitting there because they're no longer in use. But it costs money to get somebody to go and remove that dam. So instead, the owner just abandons it and just lets it sit there. And then nobody owns it. Nobody controls it. Nobody wants to pay to get it removed. So it just sits there doing nothing and hurting wildlife. Right. Yeah, I think it says that there's 90,000 dams in the United States. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's what it's like. 90,000 dams in the United States. And a lot of those have just been abandoned yeah because um, it costs money to remove to them so they don't they just abandon them um and because of that it really destroys our ecosystems and yeah. our rivers and everything like that especially because like the whole the whole purpose of dams is saying that a certain amount get to go through to sustain the ecosystem but then when it's stuck when the dam breaks like not i'm not talking like totally breaks but when it no longer becomes effective or it's ex too expensive to upkeep or all of these things um people don't people don't pay attention to it. And so all of a sudden this promise of we are letting enough water go through uh, to keep the ecosystem sustained is no longer happening. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you end up with a situation where not only is the dam not benefiting the people living there, it's hurting the ecosystem at the same time. So it's like a double yep. whammy of awful. Yep. And then that's how um, like, and, and if you include invasive species in there and you include other things, I mean, and, and as we learned as we're learning in fifth grade science, um ecosystems affect everything not yeah. just like the fish population it then affects the bug population it affects uh humans and actual like if there's a huge uprise in mosquitoes because there's not enough animals eating those mosquitoes mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. all of, or mosquito eggs then all of a sudden diseases can be passed by mosquitoes yep we deal uh, with that a lot food. we deal with that a lot here i mean as y'all as some of y'all know i live in the swamp right so we deal with that a lot here absolutely we have areas where there's like way too many mosquitoes because we've just destroyed you know the fish population or the bird population that eats them yep and then like and it's not even a um a west nile virus isn't mentioned as much but it's also like not disappeared yeah <laughs> like it's still a huge issue here in the united states so yep. that's something that's transmitted through the mosquitoes yep so all of a sudden people are getting sick like real life sick and that doesn't even talk about how it then affects their wallets because the right. ecosystem really does step in line with a lot of our with a lot of our, our economy whether absolutely. we want to talk about it or not so, absolutely all right so that is it that that was our good news and hi ty i'm so glad you were here for the end but um yes actually we're we're about to end um but you can vote for what game we're going to play next on Interstage Window, because over the next maybe month or two, um, we're going to finally finish Viva Pinata, probably in about a month and a half to two months. So um, pick on the community challenge, put your points into whichever game you want me to play next on this show. All right. So you, with that, with that, we will do our ending and I'm going to find somebody to for us to raid as well. But um, first, Landon, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter at Land in Maine, L A N D I N. It's a pun. Um, and also, you can find me on Instagram at, under I Ima underscore Slytherin. Uh, if you like, you know, things like pretty photos and burlesque. We love pretty photos. 
<laughs> oh, and I should probably say pretty photos of me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's photos of Landon. <laughs> Just it's in case good, you though. were expecting photography page, it's not a photography page. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday Landon will get into photography, but that's not, it's not that. Who knows? Could be. All right, guys. Well, you can find me um, right here, of course, on Twitch, Interstage Window. We do that on Saturdays. That is um, our podcast style stream with me and Landon and sometimes a guest. Um, and then also I have artistic license on Thursdays. That is my variety stream right now. We're mostly playing Final Fantasy X. However, next Thursday, we're taking a break from Final Fantasy X. We're going to do a manicure stream. So I'm going to show you guys how to cheat at free painting on your nails. How can you actually paint on your nails when you're not coordinated enough to paint on your nails? That's what we're going to do on Thursday. So come check that out if that interests you. Um, the, the, I also have YouTube. That's where spare room goes. That is my scripted role play help show where, um, we talk about a lot of these similar topics, to what we do on interstage window, but it's like edited down. So it's much more like discreet packaging. So if that's more your jam, go check that out. And then, uh, the socials that I use are TikTok and Twitter. Uh, I know there's no TikToks on there this week. That's because this week and last week have been absolutely crazy. Like I'm even wondering at this point, like if I'm going to be able to, post all four videos next month for um for spare room like we might have we might have a week that we have to skip because it's been just so crazy for me i've not had a chance to film new episodes so we'll see i'll keep y'all updated though if that turns out to be something that we have to do so um yeah but don't worry tiktoks will come back next week hopefully or maybe the week after it might be a two-week break from tiktok we'll see and uh then twitter so most of the tiktok and twitter i'll let y'all know is advertising but um, there is some other stuff there. So if you like hot takes, Twitter's the one. If you like silly stuff, TikTok's the one. And here we go. I'll make it easy for you guys so you can click on the different things. There is also mine and Landon's Discord. If you like to give or get roleplay help, you're welcome to join up there at the Karen and Landon Cafe. That's what that server is for. And that's it. That's all today. So let's find somebody to raid. Let's see what my friends are doing. I do have a few friends online. Would y'all prefer to watch today some Smite or some Minecraft? I'm not sure. They're probably playing some kind of modded Minecraft. Let me see if I can figure out which kind of Minecraft they're playing. Let's see. It looks like they're doing Pokecraft. So it's a modded Minecraft that's actually Pokemon, but it's inside Minecraft. What that do you think, Landon? What, what do you think people prefer, Minecraft or Smite? Pokecraft or Smite? <laughs> I don't know what Smite is, so go with Pokemon okay. Pokemon Minecraft. Okay, Pokemon Minecraft. All right. So that's going to be Jed again today. We raided him last night, but we'll raid him again. All right. The raid is going to go off in a few seconds. Um, but before we leave, thank you guys so much for joining us today. And don't forget to make it a great day. Don't forget to be awesome. All right. All right. Bye, Bye. guys. Have fun.